Rank 16. Broadly speaking, I think that the notion of keeping kosher is a deeply, deeply, deeply ethical tradition. And the same tradition which says Kadoshim Tehiyu and the same tradition which talks about Litakhen Olam B'Malchut Shaddai. And that conversation about food, for 3,000 years, we've been heir to a tradition of Kashrut. To, to ask literally, is it fit for me to eat this? What is the place of junk food and soda? What is it to eat healthily and locally and sustainably? What does Jewish tradition say about this? How do organized Jewish communities relate to it? That's an incredibly rich conversation. We believe in, in the, the halachic definition of, of kosher, the normative definition of kosher, which in a sense is very technical. It's about what foods could you eat, what foods can't you eat. Uh, one might say that it's ethically neutral, right? Whether this milk touched this meat, that's not an ethical you know, question per se. So we don't wish to redefine what kashrut is, but it is in the sense that um, kosher is sort of a, a, a byword for what is right and what is good, right? It's kasher as well as kosher. Um, and that being said, that when I eat, what I do is more than just consume food. And if you look at a lot of the, 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 the fracture in the relationship between humans and the environment that exists right now, and if you look at food as one example of that, the type of food system that we have in the United States at least, and the type of food that the majority of Americans are eating, is so far removed from what natural food is, uh, that it's really striking. And because we've lost that connection, we lost, you can go to the store and you can buy, uh, you can buy food that is highly processed, where the, uh, was, the ingredients were grown on industrial farms, and they'll paint a picture on the package of an old looking farm with a barn and a nice cow grazing in the field. But that's not at all the reality of where that food's coming from. The organization I founded, the first thing we did in the summer of 2000 was we cycled across America. And at one point we found ourselves 50 miles from Postville, Iowa, the largest kosher slaughterhouse in North America. The kosher slaughterhouse that was closed down by federal authorities for a whole series of infractions eight years later. And we phoned them up and said, can we have a look around? And they said, sure. And we went in and we saw a cow being shechted and we saw a whole series of turkeys being shechted. And I can tell you that five people went in that day and of those five people, two became vegan and are still vegetarian 11 years later. And although I personally believe that the underpinnings of Kashrut connect deeply to ethics, that kosher slaughterhouse, for example, was not deeply and completely ethical in a number of respects. And so each generation tries to inherit Jewish tradition. And, you know, in the classic words of the Amidah, the standing prayer, which somebody who's observant says, says three times a day, Eloheinu v'lahevoteinu, our God and God of our ancestors. Why does it say that? Surely, nominally, we believe in one God. And at some level, it's saying, well, we, in, we inherit the tradition of our ancestors, but we have to breathe ourselves into it. And so, for those of us who are engaged by these issues, what does it mean to keep kosher in the 21st century? That's become a really exciting topic. Having a meal is broader than just eating. It's about entering a network of relationships. And when I eat, not only do I ascertain that the food I eat is kosher, I, it's also an obligation, I believe, to make sure that the people who produce the food and the people who serve the food and the people who clean up after you are treated with respect and dignity.